you have to be able to respect and believe in this phrase when somebody says, hey, take it for granted. So it doesn't stand a chance against take it for granted because like you said, take it for granted is a change maker. It causes movement. It causes action. It demands something occurs and it has reflection in it. And this is why I'm going with you again. <laughs> it's because this little small thing and don't judge a book by its cover, it doesn't guarantee a, a positive outcome. Like, 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 even if you judge, if you do judge the book by its cover, you get what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't guarantee that the book will be good or bad. That swayed me. That did it. That did it. I was conflicted, man. And you can really look at this book think it's a good book and it could be a bad book or you could think it's a bad book and it could be a good book or you could think it's a bad book and it could be a bad book <laughs> you, you know we have a lot of expressions in the english language i don't even know what i'm saying what are we talking about where'd that come from most all of us use them every day i don't even know what that means no one knows what it means you know we just say them as if they really made as sense they really made as sense i mean how silly is that It's funny. What's going on? You know what it is. You know who it is. It's me, Mario. Welcome to the Appraised Phrase Show. Origins of Everyday Expressions. We are in the tournament, the season three Goat Phrase Tournament Series. I got my dog, 20, in the building. 20, what's good, brother? Oh, man, what's good, y'all? What's good, everybody? Hope you guys are ready, man. Like I said, this tournament started off to be really, really good, man. And it's got some great even, I'm sorry, it got even better matchups now. So even, let's get it. Even better matchups. You are correct. You are correct, sir. I don't know if you've ever, like, I'm big into Hey Arnold. And I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember the episode where, I don't know. Oh, no, 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 my brother. I, I did not grow up with cable, so I don't know the episodes like that. Yeah, okay, that's fine. It's like that. There's one episode where Gerald, the black kid, they had, like, a career day, and I think they was dream he was dreaming. Arnold was dreaming. And this nigga Gerald was a talk show host. And all he kept saying was, you are correct, sir. And, like, a black <laughs> – like, Steve Harvey, bro, before Steve Harvey. It was, like, that type of, like, shit. And so every now and then I say, you are correct, sir. So Just like Gerald. are you saying Steve Harvey's persona is fake? <laughs> they got it from Hey Arnold. They got it from Hey Arnold. That's I'm going on record, bro. On record and saying that. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a great opener. That's a great. Hey, opener. they never knew, and now they know. And <laughs> now they know. Everybody's just coming out with everything now. <laughs> no information is safe anymore. No info is safe. And guess what? Info is also not safe. What? Oh, thank you for saying what instead of just of course, <laughs> thank you. Of course, thank you. you. The results for the second four matchups of the round two tournament. You ready to hear who won out of the last four matchups? Yes, yes, please. Let's do it. Let's do it. Crowd, you ready? Yeah. Yeah, they're there ready. They're there ready. All right. So we had four matchups uh last week. Uh mm -hmm. and they are as follows. So the fourth matchup was what goes around comes around. Number 13 versus knock on wood. Tiggy touch wood. Tiggy touch wood. Oh, man. And uh, so this one was interesting. Actually, it tied. It tied for voting on Twitter. My Twitter felt the same way about both. But mm. IG, IG pushed what goes around comes around with 57% of the votes over knock on wood so ig pushed wow. what goes around comes around forward yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, just because yeah. it's petty people out there that's what it is the they don't care about superstition. the don't. petty ones don't care about superstition not at all because why don't i just do what i gotta do and not rely on the 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 could be yeah because if i keep going around it might not come up to catch me. exactly <laughs> exactly it might not catch me <laughs> <laughs> what goes around comes around. If I keep going, 
It might not catch me. It but might, yeah, man, look. So that's what happened. Nice little upset over knock on wood. I'm not super surprised, but still an upset. Um, it wasn't one, man. I know. No. Uh, next we had matchup five. It was a burden of hands worth two in the bush versus it's the thought that counts. This was a unanimous decision on IG and Twitter. It's the thought that counts. Got a burden of hands worth two in the bush out of there. Sixty-seven percent of the votes. Big win for it's the thought that counts. Makes sense. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah it makes sense too as well. I can see that. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, like it's it's you know when it. I hate to say, it, bro, but it's, if it's if it's not popular, it's going to be hard for it to win. Yeah. That's what it is. Like that's what that's what these these votes come down to. Um, and you would think that this was probably one of the most popular ones because it also got a city. But that's what yeah. I'm saying. I think my man Phil must have been busy. I didn't see him. Like if Phil would have stood on it, I think he would have helped out. But mm-hmm. without that, like without the education behind it, it ain't it ain't gonna beat nothing. Like it's the it thought that nothing. counts. Yeah, like no, nah, no, nah, 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 hell it's no, not hitting. no, it ain't hitting. It. Not at all. We have matchup six, um, easy come, easy go, number 10 mm-hmm. versus number seven. Speak of the devil, speak of the devil, and easy come, easy go, tied. Tied. <laughs> like tied? Tied. <laughs> <laughs> like Twitter? Like, it, 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 <laughs> like sudden death, 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 death. <laughs> Speak of the devil, speak of the devil was the favorite on Twitter. Uh-huh. IG and, and, and Easy Come Easy Go was the favorite on IG and it came out to a tie. So our official tie break in the tournament series. We've only we used this once last year. Oh man, yeah. that hurts, bro. Because last year it hurt. Ranking. Yeah. Oh, the highest ranking goes ahead. So speak of the devil over Easy Come Easy Go on a TKO. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, damn, damn. I didn't know which one I had. I can't remember what I picked last week, but I I didn't mind either one moving forward. But yeah, like I, this. You, you don't mind. You don't mind either one. I I can I can see that. You don't mind either one. Either yeah. one still got it, it either one still can hold up a fight in the next round. So correct, correct, correct. So speaking of the devil's gonna be doing that. And then our last matchup, we got the ends justify the means against beggars can't be choosers. Man, unanimous decision. Easy one. Easy one yeah. to tally up. Beggars can't be choosers. Got the end just by the means up. Out of there, bro. Wow. Okay. Out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, bro, it could be just on some, hey, uh, you know, I know this this one is familiar to me and we're going to do it. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, with that said, let's get into – the left side of the bracket, the first matchups, the first round one, four of the round one matchups, and we're going to talk about the round two matchups today. You ready for that, man? Yep. Let's do it. I got to press a button. Got to find it. There it is. Let's get the first matchup. Okay. Okay. Okay, if you remember from last week's episode when we gave y'all the winners, we have um, Sticks and Stones going against number 14, Sticks and Stones going against number one to take it for granted. Mm. Sticks and Stones going against number one, take it for granted. So we're going to do this, me and Tony, we're just going to compare the meanings real quick like we did in round one. And let's see which meanings hit harder against one another. So we got Sticks and Stones. Cambridge says Sticks and Stones is said in order to show that people cannot be hurt by unpleasant things that are said by them and the, to them. And the English Club Dictionary says that Sticks and Stones is a res, uh, as a response to an insult implying that you might be you might be able to be hurt by physical force, but not by insults. And then number one, take for granted to assume something as true, real, or questionable. That's what Merriam-Webster says. Dictionary.com says it's to assume that something is true without questioning it. Now, which one's meaning between these two stick a little harder for you, brother? Hmm. 
Can you go first on this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I can. I can. I don't really. This is one that I never had thoughts for. I never had thoughts for this, bro. It's like. Hopefully, because, yeah, yeah, hopefully you're going to kind of help me out. Because I'm just like, uh, we're bringing this one back. But go ahead. What do you. What do you. Yeah, I mean, looking at it, man, looking at it like, in order to show people you cannot be heard by unpleasant things are said to them. That is sticks and stones to assume right. something as true, real, unquestionable, and to be expected. The thing about taking for granted is that the way I know it is not um, unquestionable. The unquestionable part, the without question, is like you take it or uh, uh, take it as true. Not matter of fact, like mm-hmm. I don't even think of take it for granted as true or false. Right, you know, type of thing. I usually it's usually like expectation expectation and ex- uh, mm-hmm. a, a, a concrete or definite expectation where sticks and stones both definitions land on the yeah you can get hurt by physical force but not by words which even though I, I disagree with that there is no meaning that sticks and stones has that deviates that far from the thing so i think when it comes to meanings like official meaning sticks and stones is a little bit better than take it for granted. No, I get you on that one, bro. I feel like um, when you put it, I'm glad you went first because when you put it like that, I feel like then the expectation of it, the expectation of it is really what gives it more of a a stronger meeting, a stronger Mm -hmm. meaning. Now, Hmm. Yeah, bro, yeah, dude, it's, it's it's weird because when you, when you say something is taken for granted, I feel like like you know there there is both of the entities that are full, mm-hmm. but you're just not appreciating it. Yes, yes, you get what I'm saying. Like yes. like you're not appreciating this person giving you a hundred percent. Yes, you get what I yes. mean. It's not yes. it's not like this person giving you five percent. And you're not appreciate. You got to only right, appreciate right, right, out right, of a hundred, right. you know. So, but when it comes to like, like even with the sticks and stones, it's like, yeah. We go back to what you know, um, Shy Speaks was saying. Yeah, you know, yeah. The whole thing about words, yeah, man. You really, if it's physically hurt, then, bro, my by far a hundred percent. You're you're it. Yeah, you got it. Yes. It's just it's just weird because of the wordplay, bro. It's it is. It wordplay. is. It is. It is. I agree with that. I agree with that. Cool. I like that. I like that against one another. It, it, and, and that's what I like about the phrases. The tournament is like you think about the phrase and its origin on the separate show, and in a tournament, like you start to form your opinion about the phrase if you're watching the episodes based on their matchup and like how they mm-hmm. really gonna like gonna move. So I like that. So I'm adding a twist, bro. I'm adding a twist for it before we make these picks. Let's go origin for origin. Which one? Which one are you rocking with? Right? So let me let me refresh your memory on sticks and stones. So sticks and stones, the first three words are the uh of the mm-hmm. rhyme are an example of an irre- irre- irreversible binomial. So we got science on it. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. And then it the the article, an article in 1857 in the Liverpool's Northern Times included the phrase as sticks and stones. Said, uh, may break men's bones, but bad names will not hurt me. So that was the first variation. In the earliest citation in the Americas is the Christian Recorder, March 1862. And it was written, and that's from the AME Church. Uh, and it, they said, remember the old adage, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never harm me. True courage consists in doing what is right, despite the jeers and sneers of our companions. So that is the history of brief history of sticks and stones let's do take for granted real quick i love this one i actually really love this so take for granted beginning in the 1300s which is why i was number one i don't remember like it was number one because it had everything beginning yeah, in the, yeah. <laughs> everything yeah. dog 1300s everything Thanks. g so the verb grant came to mean to admit to be true or to acknowledge in the 1300s and then as early as 1620 take for granted had taken on a negative connotation so nobody was rocking with it, implying that someone was assuming something without 
evidence. Mm -hmm. And then by the 1800s, the expression had uh, taken for granted had gone on to take a new sense, assuming that someone or something would exhibit certain qualities without instructions. So like you just doing that, you don't even know how to do it, taking it for granted. That's when it took another turn. And then in the 19th century, uh, the idea of things and ideas being taken for granted was introduced. So it wasn't even like that until the 19th century, to the eighth year. And then the 20th century, people being taken for granted was introduced. Wow, bro. <laughs> it's you, relatively you know, new, dog, for people to be like, you take me for granted. Yeah. It is relatively yeah. new, G. Yeah. yeah. No, you know what? I, I mean, if we go over for origin, it got to be take for granted because, like, not only did it, it seems like it it changed, came back to the original change. <laughs> yeah. like, you feel me? Like it it left, but always came back type of deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, you know how I feel. I like I said, y'all wonder. I ain't going. I'm not going to digress. <laughs> Go back and watch the shows. <laughs> you know how I feel about sticks and stones. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And it's yep. just like it, it. It's hard for me to get behind that when, hmm. It's more of a timed phrase. Ooh. Like the origin, the origin makes it a time. Even though take for granted has been a Ross is the 1300s, it's timeless as a phrase. Ooh, okay, stay there, brother, because I'm a we got that minute gonna go. That was great, G. That was great. I agree. I agree. I think going with origin versus origin, just talk like putting those back to back take for granted comes out taller because like mm -hmm. you said it was able to all across mm -hmm. and each one of them i would even say each one of them if they stuck would be something mm -hmm. that was would be impactful today today yeah <laughs> each version yeah. that's you know like it always comes back like you taking me for granted like ironically take for granted like you're taking me back. for granted so all right man um are you okay with doing your minute first this week um i went first last week I'll tell you, I got you right now. Thank you. you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I guess I have to go with, you know, Ooh. number one, baby. <laughs> got to, man. Uh, take for granted. I just feel like if you're in a certain point of your life where you're speaking truth and you, 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 you want to be able to treat everything how you treat, you know, one thing, you have to be able to respect and believe in this phrase when somebody says, hey, take it for granted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once again, demands action. Once again, it demands change to his wealth. It demands change, regardless of if it's a negative or positive, demands change. And the longevity of it, bro, you can't go wrong with something that's been around since 1300. Mm -hmm. 1300, bro? Yeah. You know what I mean, hey, I, I mean, like, I, I just feel like it just has all of the right qualities to be a goat phrase. Longevity, power, speed, you know what I'm saying? And the way you can use it, it gives it a little bit more options when you add certain words. My man, I love it. I'm following that up. Here we go. I'm also, I'm also, you know, going with the favorite right now. I got to go number one. Sticks and Stones, it beat out a piece of cake last week because it was one of those things where which one you going to take, you know? Which one are you gonna take? And so it's here and it's time to go. It doesn't stand a chance against take it for granted because like you said, take it for granted is a change maker. It causes movement, it causes action, it demands something occurs and it has reflection in it. It has like, right. look, I've noticed and observed this thing and it is this, it is being taken for granted, whether it's an idea, whether it's a thing, whether it's a person. Like so like you gotta really like, it encompasses even like, I thought about this. So it's really, it, it's right now, and I'm jumping the gun here, but goats are the goats. Take for granted that ignorance is bliss might be like. Hey, listen. Goats I'm are the not goats. saying we gotta set it, listen. I'm not saying we gotta set up the LSU Iowa <laughs> basketball bracket so that we can be shit tight deal. I'm not saying we gotta do that, but Lord, we can't have them mean in the quarterfinals because those two right there. I mean, you know, when we go back to the goat of all goats, like like 
I, I, those two right there, it might be it. But I like the words you said, man. Reflection, bro. Oh, you got uh that's a beautiful word, man. It is. And like as a grown as a grown ass person, <laughs> as a grown ass human being. You better being, be on that shit. You better <laughs> be on some reflecting shit. Being, bro, yeah. There's no way you're getting there without reflection, man. So yeah, like yeah. So like take it for granted. Man. All right, let's keep it going. I'm loving it. I love it. Um, our next matchup, let's get into it. Okay. So we got number nine, your gift shall make room for you, which beat number eight. How you do one thing is how you do everything last week, two weeks ago. Uh, and then you got don't judge a book by its cover. Number two that I can't remember what it beat. Let me just check. Mm -hmm. It beat. The customer's always right, which it should have. Right? Should have, right? So... Uh, your gift shall make room for you, man. Look, <laughs> let's just go meaning for meaning, and let's get this out the way because I want to go with the origins. So, meaning for meaning, gift, a present, or something that makes, uh, or something that is given to make room. You move your body for other things to make space for. That's Cambridge Dictionary. A gift is a thing given willingly without payment. And to make room is to clear a certain amount of space to allow something or someone to come in. Britannica says, don't judge a book by its cover is uh, you shouldn't judge someone or something based on what you saw or see on the outside or only what you perceive without knowing the full situation. Dictionary.com says, don't judge the value of a thing simply by its appearance. Mm -hmm. Which one is harder between your gift shall make room for you and don't judge a book by its cover? I mean, I, I I feel like um has to be the the the, the judge book by its cover, no? I feel like mm, in a slight way, there. just just in a slight way, in a, in a, in a relatively like for word for word. Yeah. If it has to be word for word, then yeah, I mean, it that's can't. That's not mean judge book by a cover, you know? Yeah, it can't because the your gift makes room for you doesn't have official definition. You have to break it up between gift and make room. So gift the strength, the strength there, yeah, I would say goes with with the uh, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by its cover. It has to. You it know what I'm saying? To. If we're going by what we're, you know, personally. Yeah, and what it's officially defined as, so it loses. It loses that exactly. Work. Exactly. All right, let's 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 peep these origins. So so right Maybe now, now, now here might be a different exactly I mean? exactly here <laughs> here you might get something. So your gift shall make room for you. It's from the Old Testament. So old. It's from Proverbs eighteen sixteen. The man's gift maketh room for him and bring him before great men. Uh, most people talk about this verse in regard to talent. Essentially, what they say is that if you're talented or have something some gift or anointing or eventually you're in a place that will be made for you or you'll something will, great will happen to you or you'll be moved and put in front of great people and they'll want to hear your gift or partake in your gift. Okay, so Bible and then just translate it from the Bible from time and time and time again. And then you got Don't Judge a Book by its Cover and that's from the 1860 novel The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. And there's a character, Mr. Tulliver. He uses the phrase discussing Daniel Defoe's The History of the Devil, saying how it was beautifully bound. So I'm going to say the excerpt. Maggie looked hurt and discouraged while her father said, why, it's one of those books I bought at Partridge's sale. They was all abound alike. It's a good binding, you see. And I thought they'd all, they'd be all good books. There's Jer Jeremy Taylor's Holy Living and Dying among them. I read it often on a Sunday. Mr. Tulliver felt somehow a familiarity with that great writer because his name was Jeremy. And there's a lot more of them, sermons mostly, I think, but they've all got the same covers. And I thought they were all one sample, as you may say, but it seems one mustn't judge by the outside. So that's where the premise comes from. And it's a story that kind of like goes off of that. The, the mill and the floss goes off of like how judging someone's outer appearance instead of judging someone's heart will get you all fucked up. All fucked up. All right, origin for origin. Which one you got? I mean, that I feel like like I said, that's where that's where it changes. Like, I mean, if you're going back to the Proverbs, it was written in a good book. Like 
You want to go against a good book? <laughs> you want, who, who's amongst us wants to who's go against a good us? book? Yeah, you feel me? Like, yeah. like regardless if you you don't believe in it or not, I mean, you know that you got you. That's the most popular book ever written. You get what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you got to be able to have some kind of power when you come come out of that, you know. Yeah. And I and I get it. Like I said, I I get it with don't judge a book by its color because it is one of those things that, <sighs> bro. This is gonna be a hard one, bro. This I'm is not gonna, gonna be a tough. I agree. I agree. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm. I, yeah. I can't. Every, mama, I'm sorry. Let me just. No. No. Go. 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 Like I can't every time I try to, you know, empower one phrase and try to go and compare it to that phrase that I'm trying to empower it against. Yeah, I end up empowering that phrase too. Yes, as well. yes, so yes. It's like every time, it's like if we're talking about them individually. Oh, I can give you a thesis on both. Of them, you know what I'm saying? But just trying to compare and see which one's better. It's like now when you're talking about origins, it's that's difficult, man. Because like. The origin of Don't Judge a Book by its cover, like you once said, the whole story was about it, really. And it was just really about, you know, uh, actual instruction in life, too, as well. Like, look, yeah. bro, like, if you if you go about certain things this way, you're going to miss out on certain things in life. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah. yeah. But, but if you, uh, what was the word we used? I, I can't think of it, but it was a really nice route to talk about your uh, your blessings. If yeah. you believe in your blessings, your blessings is going to make opportunities. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. it's like, damn, bro, which one's the better advice? I feel yes. like that's, that's, that's how what it you're is. saying. Which one's the better advice? Which one's the better advice? And I'm 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 even like I I can hear you that you're leaning towards your gift makes room for you in terms of the origin yeah. matchup. Yeah. That's definitely because ordinary. it's deeper. Yeah. It's for me, I'm like, I'm a little still a little torn because like you said, the the advice, both of them have a story of advice that hits and both of them have another layer where it's like, it's not exactly what you think it is. Your gift will make room for you, like create opportunity and bring you before people that want to get out of your gift. So like, it's actually going to get you more. Then just you know what I mean, and then with Don't Judge a Book by its covers origin, the story, the the way they man use it in the story is like it's bound beautifully. So like actually, it's built. Don't judge a book by how it's built, not just how it looks, but by how it's built. Like you know what I'm saying, it, it looks well made, but it ain't well made. You know what I'm saying, or it look. So that's that's what's gonna be tough for me. That's what's gonna be tough for me. But you you know what I will say this. Yeah. What kind of gets me. I'll save it for the 60 seconds. I'll all save it for the 60 right. seconds. Do you want, do you want to keep I, I it like fresh? Because I can go first, but do you want to keep it fresh? No, no, no. I feel like I, I, it's cool. It's cool. Because I, I feel like this is the little thing that tilts it a certain way Ooh. for me. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Right, let's go. Let's go. Now, I am going to go with your gift. And this is why I'm going with your gift. <laughs> Is because this little small thing, and don't judge a book by its cover. It doesn't guarantee a, a positive outcome. Like, 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 even if you judge, if you do judge the book by its cover, you get what I'm saying. Like, that doesn't guarantee that the book will be good or bad. It's just saying, hey, <laughs> make a decision, wiser decision. Doesn't mean the decision that you, the wise decision is going to be good. It's just that, you know what I'm saying? And, and I feel like that little bit is the reason why I'm going for it because you're, what it's saying is your great gift is going to bring you in front of great people so they acknowledge and appreciate your gift. Doggy. So I'm that little right bit, that little bit. I'm running out, man, but little, wow. That little bit of, uh, of mystique, that little bit of mystique of like, yo, you can really look at this book Think it's a good book and it could be a bad book or you could think it's a bad book and it could be a good book or you could think it's a bad book and it could be a bad book <laughs> yeah man. you can think it's a good book and it could be a good book <laughs> wow bro this wow i shouldn't have let you go oh, first i should have yeah, let you I, go first all right here we go be right, i feel like be right right now. yo <laughs> I got nothing to say. I got nothing to say off that. That swayed me. That did it. 
that did I was conflicted, man. And I rock with Don't Judge a Book by its cover only because it creates a question for me that's worth exploring. Right. But you answered that question for me because who cares? Because, <laughs> because you're getting a guaranteed positive outcome with the other one. The right. other advice says do this and you're good. The other one is mm, do this so you can be good in spirit. But like the outcome could be you could be off. You could do that and still like I, I didn't judge the book and it sucks. So c- cool. Good thing I didn't judge it. Like, what does that even, what does that do for me? What does that do for me? <laughs> but if I'll use my gift and it make room for me and bring me before dope people, great people, I won. So give me that. Give me that. Number nine. Hey. Thank you, Twin. A little bit, dog. A little, a little bit. bit. A little but, bit. but, you know what? What's up? Don't judge a book by its cover. It's still one of the most powerful ones. Yes, have. it is. Yes, that's the ones we had. Yes, it is. And that just shows you how crazy this match, the matchups, and how important the matchups are. Correct. Because if you if you put Don't Judge a Book by its cover in the list of all of them, all of it just straight down the line, not versus straight down the line, it's rising to the top. It's number two. <laughs> but if you if, if you go against one that is just the truth incarnated. You get what I'm saying? Like, hey, you never know. But I still got faith in Don't Judge a Book by its cover, but I just feel like... We're just two guys. We're just two guys. We're not the voters. The voters are going to decide. We're just two guys. Thank you to all the voters. That's it. That is it. Uh, We got next week, the phrases that we told y'all. We'll let y'all know what matchups they end up being. You know what I'm saying? We'll let y'all know what matchup we end up being from the winners we said at the top of the show. Me and 20 mm-hmm. will give y'all our best to analyze it and, and give y'all a winner. But, man, keep voting. One more episode for this tournament, and then we will see y'all in season four. So, 20, before we get out of here, anything? Oh, no, nah, man. You know what? I was going to say this. Guys, please, 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 don't judge a book by its cover. All right? And I just want you to know that your gift will make room for you. Ooh, those are that's great advice, Twenty. That's great advice. I have a little bit less great advice. What you can do is you can go find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube for the visuals, appraisephrase.com. Just revamp the website. Got more great things coming. And also just remember that value is in the eye of the appraiser. Okay, yeah. I, I thought you were going to say sticks and stones. <laughs> Get us out of here. That was great. You're a good one. Yeah, like.